Hey guys, it's Mitch. How's it going? So we're getting back to some more new mutants. Surely you didn't think we were done after the first appearance of Cable. No, no, no. We're going to hit all of them eventually. Starting with April 1990's New Mutants number 88. So just before we get into it, if you enjoyed the channel, if you feel like you might want to help out a little bit, what you can do is in the description, there's a link to my Patreon. And if you subscribe there, that'll give you access to everything I do from the Blood Force stuff to the YouTube videos before they get out to YouTube as well as some Patreon-exclusive content. So yeah, New Mutants, back to the early days of Rob Liefeld. I'd never read any of these books myself. Like, I'd read number 87, because I had that reprint that we looked at last time. And then, you know, I read the, the X-Force run. So it always just kind of seemed to me that, yeah, Cable appears, and then Strife and the MLF appear, and then they kind of do a whole bunch of nothing. And Cable stands around making mean faces and saying things that Rob thinks are badass. And then he goes away, and that's it for X-Force slash New Mutants. So I am curious to see exactly what happens in these, uh, like, 12 issues before Rob completely takes over and, like, ruins everything. So let's start off with the cover on this one. That's a pretty good one. It's not the best of the Liefeld McFarlane jams, but it's pretty good. It's a professional-looking cover, which is more than you can usually say for a cover that Rob has drawn. Everybody looks fairly solid. They look like they could potentially occupy physical space. It's a Christmas miracle. So let's get into this. All right. So what's been going on in New Mutants? Not a whole hell of a lot, really. Um, the New Mutants themselves have just gotten back from Asgard after taking part in the Asgardian Wars. And last issue, they did kind of a lot of space travel without really accomplishing a whole lot. I mean, they did get home but there wasn't exactly a whole lot standing in their way. And then a large part of the issue was devoted to Cable, with him trying to track down the MLF and take him out, as Cable do. But he wasn't able to stop the MLF in time to keep them from taking Rusty and Skids from the custody of Freedom Force. And now, Cable himself is a prisoner of Freedom Force. It, it, it seems to be a fairly... Yeah, he's a prisoner, but there, it seems fairly casual. So we're going to start things off here. Uh, Freedom Force is showing cable video of Rusty and Skids being rescued by the MLF and being teleported away by them. And they keep asking Cable, eh, what do you think of that? Obviously, Rusty and Skids are on the MLF side. And it seems like they realize that's not the case. So it's just kind of a lot of posturing back and forth. You're not sure exactly what Freedom Force wants from Cable uh, other than maybe to work for them. And Freedom Force is, of course, a government-backed mutant team, in case you're not sure who that is. It, it, you'd have to be familiar with, like, late 80s, early 90s comics to know that one, I guess. All right, so this one's going to be written by Louise Simonson, penciled by Rob Liefeld, inked by Hilary Barta. So we're done with Bob Wyacek now. The inks in this are okay. I think Hilary Barta takes a, a, an issue or so to kind of get settled on life, it's got to be kind of difficult for somebody who's used to inking professional pencils to just get some live filled pages. It's got to, it's going to be a period of adjustment. All right, so yeah, there's a bunch of posturing going on here about how you know they've got him captured, uh, they found him uh, in the facility that the MLF rescued Rusty and Skids from, and uh, he was incapacitated and his metal arm had all been melted, and since then he's made a new one, which they seem okay with. It seems like he made it in the cell. Which is dumb for reasons that are going to come up later, but sure. And they bring up, since you were in the facility with the MLF and Rusty and its kids, maybe you're working for them. Again, it doesn't feel like anybody believes this. They just need to say it to, you know, kind of keep people on edge. We do get an interesting thing here where they try to come up with a background for Cable on the fly. So when Pyro suggests that Cable is maybe working with the MLF. Cable says, you know what I stand for, Pyro. You know my record. And Crimson Commando is like, yes, which is mostly off the record, Cable. Top secret operations before you went rogue. And you went rogue a long time ago. And Cable replies with, I didn't start the fight with certain elements of our government. To which Pyro says, but you did your flaming best to finish it. So, yeah, setting him up as an ex-government operative. Which is interesting. I don't think this has ever really come up again, but... Well, you know what? I have no reason to say one way or the other. I haven't read anything to do with Cable since, like, 1993. Whatever the Executioner song ended. That was the last of Cable I saw, and I was good. Thank you very much. And in terms of the art, uh, nothing special so far. 
To be fair, we're not playing to Rob's strengths. And, um, I mean, honestly, we wouldn't really over the course of this issue. But we see a guy who can, you know, draw figures a little bit, has absolutely no interest in drawing backgrounds. We're going to see plenty more of that. This is like the origin of screen doors in this issue. Here we go, starting with page four. Get him here, get him here. It's only just beginning. So, yeah, they're trying to get some information out of Cable. Uh, Blob's doing it. Stupid, because that's how Blob works, where he's trying to threaten them, and Cable isn't impressed. I think it's Crimson Commando who tries with some reason, saying, okay, look, the Mutant Liberation Front keeps blowing these places up, and they keep stealing uh, tritium, which is apparently a radioactive element used in the manufacture of hydrogen bombs. So that's a bad thing. And they still haven't really said anything about what they may or may not want, uh, but it does boil down to, look, work with us on this to bring down the MLF, or we're going to publicly denounce you as a member and then work towards your destruction. At that point, Freedom Force is called away by Mystique because X-Force's ship has uh, just landed in New York. So they're back from wherever they were. Too many comics to keep track of, man. And Liefeld is really happy with this hand he's drawing on Cable here. Because he's got all sorts of joints and stuff in there. He, like, drew every one of them. So we're going to keep seeing that hand, I think, going forward. He's working on his Jim Lee shadows. Yeah, these are all, like, he's picking, like, the easiest shots possible for each of these panels. Yeah, there's that hand again. Not quite as well executed on the last page, I think. Uh, so maybe that's the end of it for now. So Cable ponders to himself about how he needs to stop the MLF. He needs to rescue Rusty and Skids. He's obviously not going to take Freedom Force's offer to do it, but... As a strategist, which is how Cable's been presented in these first few issues, uh, he's decided that he can't go it alone. It's obviously not working, so he's going to need some backup. And he might go, this is a pointless sequence. Back to back, like, you know, shot of Cable's knees with X-Factor ship. Close up on Cable's eyes. Shot of Cable's knees. with a But the thing is that I'm pretty sure this is a photocopy page, and he just kind of slightly changed it. You look at the stuff like the clouds here, they're the same. Not the knees, though, I think. The arm, maybe. Hard to say. It could be that the photocopies are penciled and it's just inked differently. I don't know. The buildings are definitely uh, photocopied, though. So the only reason to have the same panel twice in there is, is <laughs> so Rob doesn't have to draw those damn buildings again. So now we cut to the ship where Rob has to draw those damn buildings again. And New Mutants are going to go and check and see how X-Factor are doing. Uh, X-Factor have been looking after the New Mutants, apparently. Again, this is stuff I'm not really familiar with. And, you know, New Mutants have been away in Asgard. X-Factor have been away doing something with the ship. So now they can have a big old reunion. And the first thing they see is Archangel flying off. And he doesn't even notice them. Not a bad shot of Archangel. This is the kind of pose I feel like Rob can do fairly well. We don't see it a ton from him, though, but it's it's fairly solid. And apparently, in order to know where Archangel is speeding off to, we should be seeing X-Factor number 51. Um, again, I'm good. X-Factor number 51, like in that era, I think that's a tweener era, where we're just past the Simonson stuff, and we haven't gotten to another a new dedicated artist like Portacio or uh, Larry Stroman. There was, a, there was like 20, 30 issues there where X-Factor was just kind of drawn by whoever, it feels like. There's a, there's a Liefeld issue in there, too, which is really weird and stands out. All right, so the New Mutants arrive. It looks like X-Factor is just finishing up giving a uh, press conference or something, so we probably should have read X-Factor number 50 for that. And everybody drops in to say hi, and they're all super happy to see each other. So Rain explains where they've been in Asgard and all that, and asks to see uh, little baby Cable here. Beast is apparently even happy to see Boom Boom. And he expresses surprise at that. Sunspot here explains to Cyclops that Rusty and Skids got left behind when the New Mutants went off to Asgard. And they're, he's looking to figure out what happened to them. There's been a bit. And then we're going to cut to Cable. So that's it for our reunion. Uh, Cable is going to feign sickness. So he's going to do get help, essentially. <laughs> And one of them says, it's probably a trick. And the other guy's like, Look, he's been searched for weapons and he's shackled. We have guns. There's no trick here, except that K 
Cable obviously does have something. He's got Liefeld hands, for one thing. Just squirmy Liefeld hands. And yeah, just before I flip it, it's always weird seeing Liefeld do, like, X-Factor, X-Factor. This is something I've rarely seen. And, it, yeah, it, it never looks right. So it turns out that Cable had a blowpipe, which he seductively uses on the guard here. He then pulls out a vial of acid, which he also apparently had, and uses it to melt his uh, his shackles. So when he was rebuilding his arm, he made sure to create like little hidey places where he could keep like vials of acid and a blowpipe. Which I'm sure, I guess, they're, they're very weird and specific things to hide. Like, how do you get acid when you're a prisoner to hide in your bionic arm? I don't know. But that's why I'm not Cable. So Cable runs away and knocks over uh, the penciler because he gets this weird out of focus shot where we we don't see much of anything. We like we, it, the close up is of Cable's foot. So I mean, anytime anybody wants to accuse Rob Liefeld of not drawing feet, like here's a whole panel dedicated to a fucking foot. So from there we cut back to New Mutants and X Factor. And they're catching up on what's been going on with Rusty and Skids. And they see that they've been captured by Freedom Force. And uh, Rusty here got the piss beat out of him, apparently. Very strange panel. Doesn't look anything like Liefeld. And then they find out about the Mutant Liberation Front looking to free Rusty and Skids so that they can get them on their side. And threatening to blow shit up every day that they don't get Rusty and Skids. And New Mutants are all like, yay! Go terrorists! Like, seriously, they're, they're like, hey, somebody's doing something. At which Iceman throws a bunch of snow at him and goes, hey, kids, terrorists aren't cool. Like, this does look like PSA Iceman. But I guess it's fair that, like, you know, other mutants, when they, when they first hear about a mutant group being described as a band of terrorists, they'll probably go, yeah, we should give those guys the benefit of the doubt. Because I'm pretty sure every X group has been branded a bunch of terrorists at some point or another. Okay, so Cyclops, like a good company man, then calls up Freedom Force to be like, yo, we saw the footage of Rusty and Skids and we don't like how that went down. So we want them remanded to our care. I'm not sure what version of X Factor this is. Like, I know when they started, they had this public image where they were mutant hunters. And they would actually, you know, like they'd find rogue mutants and then just kind of hide them away somewhere. I think we're probably too far along for that to still be the case. But I guess they still got some sort of official standing, so they're going to go through official channels. I will say I don't know why. Like, why does Freedom Force go along with that shit? Obviously, they know that these are the original X-Men. Blob was in, like, X-Men number three. I mean, Mystique has fought the X-Men forever. She, know, she knows about, all about Cyclops. Like, shouldn't X-Factor be considered a terrorist group, too? Maybe they are. I mean, like I said, I, I wasn't reading X-Factor around this time. So, we'll just have to guess. So, Mystique informs Freedom Force that X-Factor is inquiring about Rusty and Skids. And Freedom Force isn't inclined to tell them, yeah, no, sorry, we lost them. Because, it, you know, it, it makes them lose face. So they're going to have to just keep stalling them until they can find them or something. But meantime, one of the guards busts in. He wasn't able to radio because Cable severed all the communications. But he's able to advise them that Cable has escaped. So they all go rushing out. Meanwhile, right around the corner from the door, Cable is actually waiting. And I'm not a fan of how Rob draws the blob, I gotta say. Where he's just like, you know, tiny head, gigantic gorilla arms. And he's always like, the proportions never make any kind of sense. There's a bit of work going on in this arm, at least, though. I wonder how much of that is Hillary Barta. Maybe not too much. So immediately when they start running out, Cable cold cocks Pyro, where the blob can hear them. And so, yeah, he's going to start coming at Cable. He's like, you can shoot me all you want. You're not going to do anything. So Cable uh, activates Pyro's flamethrower thing. And see, like, the proportions here are just a fucking mess. And, like, didn't have to be. Like, why are you sticking the blob's head way the fuck up here? Is it just because Rob wanted to do a double-page splash? That might have been it. And then he messed up his whole fucking composition. But, yeah, like, I see stuff like this. And I'm like, okay, so we're not at the stuff yet where Rob is getting fans excited. It certainly wasn't in New Mutants number 86, which was Rusty and Skids versus the Vulture. And I don't think it was in New Mutants number 87, because Ink by Bob Wyatchek 
it didn't look anything like Liefeld and a lot, you know, he wasn't able to do any big flashy imagery. He is doing big flashy imagery here, but it's pretty fucking bad. So Cable leaps out a window. There was a window there. Uh, lands on the lawn and starts shooting back and then runs off into the wilderness. Like this is maybe a little bit more, yeah, what you would expect with the shot of Cable here. Shooting and fist pumping at the same time. I just don't, yeah, I guess I just don't get the mentality. If, like, you know, if it were me reading this thing at the time, like, he's built up no goodwill. He's shown a whole bunch of, like, he doesn't like to draw most of the things in comics. And almost everything that I have seen isn't exactly exciting. Okay, so, we cut back to X-Factor's ship, where still nothing is really going on. Uh, New Mutants are just kind of hanging out. You know, they're back from their big battle in Asgard. And now it seems like they don't really have anything to do. It seems like some of them are calling their parents now that they're home, like Sam is on the phone with his mom, and it's all, yes ma'am, yes ma'am, yes ma'am. Sunspot isn't going to call his dad, because from what I remember, that he his dad's kind of a piece of shit. And we get this telephone cord panel border, which I feel like I've seen before. I think it was in a brigade issue. Yeah, it was too. It was in the space story. I do recall that. Which Merritt Michaels did the layouts for. So I wonder if Rob gave him that idea. Maybe. Oh, let's see that cover again. Nice. And yeah, just a bunch of people standing around. Not fun for Rob to draw. Not really fun to read. But then Boom Boom comes into the room. And she's got her fancy new dress on. And everyone's drooling over her. Because, like, her her dress appears to be kind of see-through. Seeing, like, the, the, the hip lines and everything. And Rain's thinking to herself about how that dress looks kind of shameful. So, yeah, I think from that we can deduce the, the dress is, in fact, transparent. So, yeah, Sunspot and Warlock are gushing over Boom Boom. Uh, Richter isn't, though. He's still talking to Rain about how, when she was a kid, uh, she got raised by Moira McTaggart. And Boom Boom is put off that Richter isn't also lavishing her with attention. Because she doesn't know Richter is, in fact, super gay. Which will be verified maybe, like, 20 years from now, I think. <laughs> but, yeah, it's important you get those seeds in there early. So, now, you gotta get Richter... Pointedly not looking at Boom Boom's cooch so that he can continue to talk to Rain about her foster mother. And yeah, so Richter continues to ignore. Boom Boom throws a dud bomb at him, which he saw coming apparently. And yeah, they just kind of have like a, a, a little spat here, which Rain kind of solves by just saying, no, you look very nice, Boom Boom. Really, doesn't she look nice, Richter? And Richter says she looks fabulous, so we're able to get on with the rest of our day. So yeah, that's that's kind of it for this little sequence. Not really a whole lot going on in this. This whole issue, there has not been anything happening. Other than Cable escaping from Freedom Force, which he's still doing. This is a bit of a better shot of the blob here. Uh, it looks like he broke both his knees, but I mean, that's okay. He doesn't need them. And he's going to go just chomping after him through the woods. And Cable thinks that uh, the only reason he's gotten this close is because he's let him get that close. Because Cable set up traps. I'm not sure when. Because assuming this carries on directly from the last sequence with these two, you know, Cable jumped out the window, shot back, and then Blob jumped out the window. I, unless he just kind of sat around for a minute and, you know, like Cable ran in the woods and set up this trip wire and then ran back out to be like, yeah, chase me. And he is able to catch the Silver Saber, but not quite kill him. Although that wasn't really set up for him. Uh, Blob figures it was more set up for him and uh, that Cable knew it wouldn't be fatal. And it looks like Cable's kind of a, a Punisher type here where they're like, uh, what was it? He's toying with us. He's a cocky son of a gun, but he knows we're Uncle Sam's mutant cops and he's no cop killer. Last thing he wants is for one of us to die and bring the government down on his head. So he's heading for the chopper pad, but that live and let live attitude is going to be the death of him. As sure as my name is Fred J. Dukes. So yeah, he's, he's going to make it to the chopper pad uh, well ahead of him. This is this panel here is a fucking mess. Like, he doesn't do this kind of mouth on anybody else. This is just for the blob. So I, I assume he figures that the blob's mouth unhinges like a snake. And that's where he keeps all his backup teeth, too. And one last time with the New Mutants. Uh, Rain is able to get on the phone with Moira, who is dressed up like a dominatrix. I'm not sure what is going on in X-Men that would prompt this. I'm trying to think of where we are. This should be right around the beginning of the Jim Lee era. And yeah, I don't, honestly don't know what's going on in those books. But Rain tells her how awesome it was uh, being in Asgard. 
and meeting the Wolf Prince, Rimhari, and just kind of gushing over the whole thing. And Moira gets super businesslike and like school marmish, which is not how I've ever seen Moira be written, which makes me think uh, possession or something like that. Grandma was a fan of the possession kind of angle. But uh, yeah, she she very clearly tells Rain, okay, that's enough fucking around. You've got to come home to Scotland. Rain doesn't want to. Uh, Moira says, tough shit. Pack your bags. And yeah, Rain is weirded out by the whole conversation. I don't blame her. I, yeah, no, like I said, I've never seen... Moira always seems kind of like, like a bit of a sap. You know? <laughs> Wanting to do the right thing and often fucking up the right thing. And then in the process, kind of making everything worse. Uh, so now we're going to get like a throwaway end page where we cut back to Cable. And he jumps on the helicopter and they, they're they able to run up, and, but he just kind of jumps in and starts shooting at them and gets away. And they go, you got to admit it, that guy's got style. And Masik tells Crimson Commander to get after him. She wants him stopped. And yeah, this like, there's no pace to this. This is such a fucking mess. Like the sequence of events is just bad and dumb. And then this isn't a page you end on. This is maybe a middle of the book page. Although hopefully you would pace it out better for that. Yeah, just a weird spot for this issue to end. All right. So that's it for New Mutants number 88. Yeah, very odd issue. It seems like since Rob came on board, it hasn't had a direction. Like it feels pretty clearly that uh, Louis Simonson probably wanted to focus more on the New Mutants getting back from Asgard and, you know, catching up on the world when they when they get back to Earth. And then this whole cable thing keeps getting shoved in there, and it's like she doesn't know what to do with it. And I'm not sure who's doing plots on these. I still assume that a lot of this is pretty tightly scripted, but there's stuff in here that's very definitely Rob. Like this page one to page two, that seems like Rob plotted that shit out. Big images and a two-page spread. That's all kind of useless, really. Let's see, this is April of 1990. We're right around when Todd is starting up Spider-Man number one. And I think he's in Rob's ear all the time about how to go about making money. Uh, so he probably told him about the spread idea and then just Rob couldn't figure out how to do it at first. I think that might be the case, but I don't know. That's that's stretching a little bit. And yeah, so okay. Cable was captured. Cable escaped. New Mutants get home. The end. Uh, it's not very different from the last issue, really. So next issue, uh, we wrap all this junk up and I guess figure out what the hell we're even going to do going forward. Again, it doesn't feel like there's any kind of direction. So maybe Louis Simonson has to kind of start from square one. I'm not even sure. I'll be honest, I expected these to be more entertaining than they are. They're not very good. Uh, like, you know, the art's not great and the story has no focus. Very strange. Not what I was expecting at all. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notification so you know when the next one's coming out. Go over and subscribe on my Patreon. That'll give you access to everything I do, from the Blood Force stuff, the pages and the finished comics, to the YouTube videos before they get uploaded to YouTube, as well as some Patreon-exclusive content. You can also follow me on Instagram and DM me there for commissions. I'm sure this has to get interesting in some way eventually. I mean, Rob built up a following... You know, like, X-Force didn't just come out of nowhere. Sooner or later, something's going to have to either look cool, or cool shit is going to have to happen. I just hope it's before I, like, completely lose interest in the New Mutants storyline. Just drop it. Anyway, that's going to do it. Thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.